right? Uh, bigger audience than I was expecting. That's good to see. Um, let's start out with some questions for you guys. Uh, how many people in here are content authors and editors? A couple. How many people are marketers? Developers? Okay, most people. I'm glad I got some, uh, some of that. Uh, I'll have something somewhat technical towards the end of the presentation, so um, not all about content, but um, yeah, let's, let's dive in. Uh, my name is John Doyle. I'm the CEO of Digital Polygon. Um, uh, my goal is to help build a better internet, and I really enjoy hiking, snowboarding, and sailing the seven seas, um, or the local lake, maybe. Um, uh, a big shout out to Rick Buck, um, who helped me put together the original version of this two or three years ago, uh, and I've been updating it ever since. Um, Rick was the uh, CPO at a company called Wirewheel, uh, and recently just switched jobs to be the data privacy officer at uh, another company. He started two days ago, I don't remember the name, so. Um, which one? Ionis. Yeah, Ionis Pharmaceuticals, so. Um, agenda for today. We're gonna talk about the privacy landscape in the US and how it's evolving. Uh, we're gonna talk about how privacy is gonna impact your website in the United States. Um, and then we'll talk about some useful resources for staying ahead of the laws. Um, I'll try not to put you to sleep, um, and uh, let's jump into it. So first thing for everyone to know is that privacy changes are moving fast. Um, how many people have dealt with privacy on their websites? Okay, most of you. Was it, all right, how many people on just the GDPR side? What about the US laws? Okay, so less, less on that. Um, okay, uh, so to give you kind of some background, over the last five years, uh, not including 2023 on this graph, uh, six laws have been passed in the United States. Uh, in 2023 alone, three have been passed so far. Um, so when we talk about rapid growth, uh, uh, you're seeing uh, more and more speed coming to these legislations and uh, it all started with California and the other states have rapidly been evolving uh, and picking up from where California set the bar uh, and going from that, but every state has slightly different requirements on their privacy laws, which makes things extra fun. Um, if we take a look at this on a, a graph of the US um, or a map of the US, uh, you can look at 2022 versus 2023 here, and you can see that there's a whole lot more green um, on, on the map, and the green is signed bills uh, that have gone into effect for new privacy laws. And um, uh, like I said, uh, it's getting more complex, more and more things are coming, it's not gonna stop anytime soon. Um, and last time I checked, there wasn't a, not a likelihood that the federal uh, government is gonna pass a comprehensive privacy law uh, anytime soon. Um, but you know, hopefully they'll surprise us so we can stop dealing with all of these one-offs. Um, when we look at uh, like some background on the states and when these uh, laws go into effect, um, here's, here's the dates. California is already in effect. Uh, next month, Colorado and Connecticut go into effect. At the end of the year, we've got Utah. And then through 2024 and 20, uh, through 2026, we've got four other states uh, that are gonna start enforcing uh, the legislation that's been passed. Um, so this is just gonna give you an overview of the landscape of how these things are trickling out um, uh, to kind of set, uh, I guess, set your mindset of this is not something that's gonna go away or not something that's gonna slow down. Uh, it's just gonna get more and more uh, complicated as this goes, goes on. Um, uh, and if you take a look at the uh, requirements for these laws, um, they don't impact every business. So um, California, uh, for you to be implicated in the California law, you have to be doing business in California and then uh, meet one of the following requirements here. So 25 million in revenue, um, 50,000 plus customers in California, and 50% uh, of that revenue is from selling data for sales. Um, and if you go into CPRA, it's from selling or sharing that data. Um, and uh, some nuances here, uh, for CCPA, uh, the uh, selling of data 
was pretty ambiguous. CPRA made it very clear that uh, if you're sharing data with Facebook, uh, that is a sharing of data, and you're uh, breaking the California law if you're not letting someone opt out of that. Um, and if you haven't heard of something called the Sephora decision, uh, Sephora was fined like $1.4 million for not taking automated consent from users on their website for a Facebook pixel. Um, so that kind of sets the, the precedence here for marketers and how freely we used to be able to use this data and how that is changing. Um, and then if you look at the actual landscape here, you're not meant to actually read this graph, but uh, at the top we've got the states that are passed, and at the bottom we've got all of the other states that have legislation in process um, for bills that are active uh, to move forward uh, in this process. Um, all of them have uh, similar pieces to them, um, but different requirements. And I'm not going to go through these in detail in this section. We'll, we'll dive more into what it me means for your website. Um, but uh, the laws are pretty well categorized into these different uh, types of consumer rights that they're trying to protect. Um, and we'll get into here in a minute what that means for your, uh, for your website. Um, but before we jump into that, some key takeaways from the landscape. Uh, there's an increasing number of international and U.S. privacy laws, and most of the new laws closely resemble GDPR, and the fact that you need notice and choice, you need privacy rights, uh, there's a focus on ad tech. Um, so all of these privacy laws are about protecting your data as a user um, and limiting how organizations can use that data without your consent. Um, and there's heavy penalties being uh, assessed for breaking uh, breaking these uh, new laws that are going into effect. Um, I always like to say who has the data has the power, right? And it's our responsibility to, um, to leverage that power wisely um, and to uh, be able to do it in a way that benefits our users. Um, I think we're getting more and more into this idea of a trust economy and um, you know, brands are starting to lose uh, traction if they break consumer trust. Uh, and privacy is one of the ways that this is going to continue to evolve. Um, so all of the things that you do as a marketer um, or that you support marketing as a developer for building user experiences and personalizations and targeted campaigns and advertising, uh, all of this is gonna be greatly impacted by these new privacy laws and it's important for us as web teams to figure out how do we work in this new space and how do we still enable marketers to do their jobs. Um, right, so I talked a lot about privacy laws, I talked a lot about the changing landscape, uh, got, got the boring stuff out of the way. What does this mean for you, right? What does this mean for your website? Um, let's break it down into three categories. These laws basically say marketing teams need to do three things. You need to provide information, you need to facilitate requests, and you need to manage user consent. Um, if we dive into each one of these, um, as, as a website, providing information are things like privacy notices and cookie usages, right? So GDPR, you have a cookie banner, it's got all your cookies on it, all the vendors that you use, and you need to tell your user what you're doing, how you're collecting information, and how you're using it. Facilitating requests is allowing users to reach out to you and make a request to delete their data, access their data, fix it, uh, or port it. Um, so this is, <coughs> you'll, you'll see this in the industry, it's called DSAR requests, um, is kind of where this started with CCPA. And uh, your, your website is your storefront, right? So it's important that a user can come to your website and make these requests because there's likely uh, not another easy way to get to you. And lastly, it's managing consent. Um, everyone's probably familiar with cookie consent. It's been around for a long time with GDPR. Um, but these new laws don't target cookies. And we'll get into that a little bit more here in a minute. They target tracking, right? There's all of these new marketing vendors that pitch cookie list tracking. That doesn't matter. It's still tracking user data. It's still tracking users. It's still uh, a problem when dealing with these laws. Um, do not sell, do not share. Uh, you'll see that, and then there's also consent for targeted advertising. A lot of these laws have additional nuances for special use cases, so um, kids, uh, for example, 
and uh, health and medical. There's a lot of new legislation coming out uh, for anyone that, that deals in that space. Um, and there's different requirements for organizations uh, for that. Um, as a whole in the US for normal websites that are targeting consumers for e-commerce or uh, marketing, it's typically an opt uh, out instead of an opt in like GDPR. So you can still market to people until they opt out. Um, but one important thing that we'll dive into a little bit here is you have to give your users the ability to opt out before you start tracking them. And that adds a lot of complication to how do you show them a website? How do you give them a good user experience? How do you enable these users to opt out while still giving them your website? And like, what's the right amount of time? Is it five seconds? Is it 10 seconds? Is it, hey, I need to show you a, a modal and you have to click through it? Um, all of which have, have different impacts on your user. Um, so some examples of pro providing information. Um, a lot of this is your privacy notices, cookie notices, data collection. A lot of organizations are putting together these privacy centers on their website. Um, I think this is Home Depot's. Um, has a pretty good layout here. Talks about what they do with privacy and how they collect information and gives you the tools to uh, contact them and, and opt out as well. Facilitating requests, um, this is typically a form on your site. Um, for a lot of smaller organizations, I've seen just email addresses. Um, you're not required to have a form or an intake on the website, but this helps you automate it. And, uh, but you do need a section in your privacy policy or somewhere on your website to take these requests, and then you have to actually execute them once you get it, right? So don't just throw an email uh, inbox on there that's not monitored. Um, because you, uh, you can get in trouble for not, uh, obviously, executing on these requests. Uh, and lastly, managing consent. So everyone has seen the cookie banners or not seen them on websites. Um, and then we'll talk about a couple other automated controls here. Um, one is the global privacy control or GPC signal. Um, this is, uh, is probably actually why Sephora got fined. Um, it wasn't that they weren't giving users the ability to opt out, it's that they weren't allowing the automated decision making to happen. Uh, and GPC is the control that kind of sets that up right now for the do not sell, do not share uh, functionality. Um, one other thing to note, there are no requirements in the current US laws. Uh, as I've been hearing from legal experts, I am not one, uh, that cookie banners are required in the US. Um, so, uh, I think industry is realizing banner blindness is real. Cookie banners suck. They're not good user experiences. Um, there's got to be a better way to do this. And um, you'll see a lot of the new tools and technologies coming out in the US to solve these problems uh, don't involve banners. A lot of them are putting links in your footer um, for uh, your privacy choices. So, if you go to Sephora, you'll see it in their footer now. Uh, a link that says your privacy uh, choices that'll take you to a portal and give you the options to opt in or opt out. Um, and uh, the automation around it with the GPC signal is, is how you can automate that for users that uh, maybe that, ex that, that deals with the problem of allowing them to opt out before you track. Um, but we'll see how the market evolves with that. Um, so let's take, a, let's take a simple marketing example for consent and look at how this actually works with your website. Um, here is a diagram. Uh, you've got a website, you've got Google Tag Manager, and you've got a bunch of tracking pixels through Google Tag Manager uh, that load on your website. Um, your setup might look something like this. It might look a little bit different. Um, but when someone opts out, Basically, what we do is we stop firing scripts. Um, it doesn't matter uh, for the cookie, right? C third party cookies are gonna go away. Um, so deleting cookies doesn't stop you from being tracked. You loading uh, a URL from a third party, they've already got the IP address of the client that it was loaded on. So that is tracking personal information and allowing you to be targeted specifically based on that information. Um, so again, it's not about cookies, it's about 
the scripts that you're loading on your website and uh, the third party uh, data that is being collected by them, uh, or the data that's being collected by the third parties, I guess is a better way to say it. Um, so um, basically when someone comes in and opts out, ideal state, hey, we turn off GTM or we turn off the tags within GTM so we're not loading these third party scripts um, and I don't have a problem anymore. Um, obviously it's more nuanced than this. I don't think anyone's gonna have a stack this simple um, and a lot of times your application will actually set additional cookies and tracking scripts that you may also have to deal with depending on what laws you're dealing with. Um, so your results will vary here. Um, sorry to anyone that's not technical. Um, this next section is, in, uh, is really meant to give you an idea of how the industry is thinking about solving these problems uh, at scale with the, with the laws and what uh, might be to come for tech teams, um, though more likely than not, you'll start seeing third party tools that are gonna solve this for you so you don't have to deal with the details, um, but uh, I think it's interesting to explore nonetheless. So let's recap. Users need the opportunity to opt out before they're tracked. Uh, some of the laws have opt-in for certain conditions, so depending on what you're doing, there's some complexity there. GPC signals cover the do not sell, do not share, but what about the other 12 pieces of consent that uh, these laws indicate I have to deal with? Um, the number of laws is gonna continue to increase, it's not gonna decrease, it's not gonna centralize. Um, your organization is gonna have to deal with, do I geo-target by state? Can I really do that effectively? Um, should I do it across the whole US? And then what's the aggregate set of state laws that I have to deal with? Uh, it's, it's not a, uh, a trivial answer. And I, I don't think I've seen any two organizations we've worked with on this make the same decision. Um, we're trying to get people talking and, and working together with legal teams to do this. And there's a lot of uh, uh, privacy uh, teams working with the industry to try to get this kind of ironed out. Uh, but but uh, we're not there yet. So standards are gonna be introduced, right? So how do we deal with this? Websites are gonna be expected to heal, adhere with the standards. In Europe, you've got something called TCF 2.0, uh, which is a way for a, a framework that the web, your website knows how to talk to your marketing vendors and they know how to read these signals that are being passed back and forth. In the US, um, uh, the IAB has proposed something called GPP or the Global Privacy Platform uh, for the United States signals. And I'm just gonna walk you through a couple slides from uh, the IAB here on what this spec is and what they're proposing so you can kind of understand the complexity of what they're trying to solve here. Um, so this is kind of a diagram of what happens when an ad request is made to uh, an ad vendor. Um, and I'm not gonna go into all the details here, but basically your website sends a request out via an API uh, to uh, an ad agency that gets sent out to other bidding platforms and then people bid on that ad space on your website, right? Um, so how do these ad spaces know if they can track users and if they can use this data and if I can pass this data on. Um, they're proposing that we put together this nice little string of uh, three values, right? Uh, what's in the string, encoded values for these other two sections and we'll get into this here in a minute. Um, uh, it's gonna be encrypted, it's gonna not be human readable uh, and it's actually pretty complex to deal with. Um, but they wanna build a standardized way to deal with this. So. Uh, this is basically what it's gonna look like. Uh, this is taking one state into account um, for California. Uh, you've got the conditions over here. I'm not gonna go through them all, but they were shown the, the privacy notice. Uh, they did not opt out of seller share and the GPC signal is not detected. Uh, you've got about 10 other values here. You're gonna convert this into a bit representation and then encode it for California. And that's gonna be the pr first part of your string. Uh, the second part is gonna include uh, the sections that you're dealing with with California, which again, getting really technical and legal here, um, which most web teams are gonna be like, what is this? Um, and then lastly, you're gonna encode the header here, uh, which is uh, going to put those three pieces together and you're gonna get this GPP string here that looks uh, kind of like garbage at the bottom. 
Um, and this is what you're going to send out as, on your website to all of your vendors and say, this is what my user decided. Um, hopefully, none of us in this room are going to have to go and do this. We're going to re rely on third-party vendors to give us a tool that we can put on our website and, and make this happen. Uh, but as these privacy laws get more complicated and this th these things come out, and they're actually getting regulated against, you know, we, we probably need to understand how they work and get more up to speed on them. Um, so what tools are there to help right now? Well, if you're compliant with GDPR, um, GDPR goes further than the US laws. And if you implement GDPR in the US, you're gonna be covered by 99% of the laws because it's an opt-in regime. You're not gonna load any tracking until someone opts in. Um, in the US, you have to opt out, so you're already doing that. Uh, downsides to that is you can't market to people until they opt in, and opt-in rates are very low, right? So uh, not really uh, a great choice here. Uh, there's a number of vendors that are working on tools for you to integrate into your website and support this. Um, they've got privacy teams, they've got uh, lawyers working with them, and they ideally will start integrating the new laws into that platform, handling the GPP strings for you, um, and setting this up so that as the new laws come out, you're already protected uh, with the tools that they provide. Um, important to understand this, so you know the right questions to ask when you're going to look for a vendor and what their tools are, right? Um, just like any other sales tool or sales product, uh, they're gonna try to sell you the tool and then you're gonna figure out if it works or not for you. Uh, so um, important for you to understand how these uh, privacy laws work and, and what the setup is. Um, we've already talked about GPC a bit, um, but this was um, first announced by uh, the AG of California. And uh, the idea is that we should be able to set on our browser that I don't want to be tracked. And my websites that I go to should respect that. Um, and if that mechanism happens, it gives users the right to choose, and it gives a simple way for websites to be able to automate that decision. We don't need banners. We don't need these complex tools to do it. And ideally, on the website, if I like it, I trust the brand, I can override that signal for just that website. Um, like I said, this right now only takes into account the do not sell, do not share. Um, so, you know, we'll see where the market takes it, but um, it's, it's a good place to start. And you really want to make sure any tool that you pull in respects these automated signals uh, because, again, it's why Sephora got fined for not dealing with that. Um, to make this more complex, you've also got downstream vendors that um, are implementing consent mode, like Google. Um, and Google says if someone opts out and you have the right headers on your page, uh, we're going to not track the user on our tools. Um, this is great, uh, but the other 99% of marketing vendors don't support this. They don't, they expect you to not fire it, right? And it's, it's, it's on you to understand if your downstream vendor is supporting it, uh, they're not gonna be sued for it, you will be. So. Um, just take it with a grain of salt. These tools are nice. These frameworks are nice for uh, the tools that support them. Um, but I don't think I've ever seen a marketing team only use Google um, to do this. And uh, yeah, so just keep that in mind as you're working through it. All right, key takeaways. Privacy is more than a button on the bottom of your screen. It's more than a cookie banner. Just putting out a cookie banner is not going uh, to give you the uh, compliance that you need uh, to deal with the new privacy laws. Uh, it's your organization's responsibility to know the laws and regulations. You can't expect the downstream vendors to do it. Um, they're not the ones that are getting in trouble for it. You will be. Um, and it really can be as simple as say what you do and do what you say. Um, your privacy policies should say what you do, and your website should do what you say. Um, and uh, if you can get behind those principles, uh, you're giving users the right to choose, um, you're building trust with them, and this is how we can drive that forward. Um, and together, we can build a better internet. So 
Um, I've got a list of additional resources and all of the graphs and uh, uh, information that you saw on the deck uh, is available on the IEPP website. Um, so IEPP is a, an organization that uh, uh, supports, runs conferences for privacy. Um, so if it's something that you're interested in, uh, I can share the slides for sure. Uh, there's a few other vendors that have uh, tools for comparing laws and how they differ from one another. Uh, Wirewheel has the privacy laws comparison table on their website. IEPP has some additional tools there. And then I link to the specs, the technical specs of the GPC and GPP uh, spec here. Um, most of these things are GitHub repositories, so you can go in, see how the code works, see how the specs are defined, uh, very de developer friendly. Um, and we can learn a lot from what Europe has done with the TCF 2.0 framework uh, as well, which I'm sure uh, a lot of you guys have had to deal with uh, with this. So that's all I have for today. I know I went through that really fast, so I want to open it up for questions and if there's anything else you guys want me to go through again. Yeah. Yeah, GA4 is a, a good example of a lot of the newer technology and the power of really ML, right? It's taking those heuristic identifiers like your IP address and your browser ID and things that you haven't given anyone but they can, uh, they can track you with. And it's not that this hasn't been done before, it's they're making it more transparent to you and giving you more access to that data um, and, and exposing it through the new tools that they have. So yeah, I mean it's 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 really interesting on how that goes, and you know I think as we see the market mature, we'll see a lot more first-party data uh, platforms come out, um, a lot less third-party. Um, but most organizations aren't prepared to deal with first-party data and capturing and organizing and reporting on it. So um, so yeah, we'll see. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's the good thing about the laws is really making companies and marketers understand what they're actually doing with this data and what data they're giving to users, right? I think Facebook is a good example we can probably all relate to and just how much data Facebook took from anyone who used it and how they're using that to market. Um, so yeah, I find it fascinating. Um, I'm gonna have to watch the social network and uh, yeah, always fun to inspire uh, about. Um, any other questions? We're seeing the same thing in the US. Um, and you know, I, I talk through GPP because it talks about the complexity of the problem they're trying to solve. Um, but without the buy-in of the downstream vendors and without them being held accountable, right? There's, it's their product roadmap. It's something that's not gonna generate them more revenue um, unless marketers say, I'm not using you until you get this. That's impactful enough to, to do it. So um, a lot of the tools will probably still have to comply with that because it's gonna be a regulation for the websites to still push it out. Um, but uh, 
Yeah, I, I think uh, they tried something else in the U.S. with the U.S. privacy signal, um, which was a, a, a four-character bitmap um, on uh, for do not sell, I believe. Uh, or yeah, I, I'd have to look up the spec again. But anyway, it was a header that you put on your page request, and all the downstream vendors were supposed to respect it and and stop uh, tracking that user downstream. Uh, but I don't know, less than less than one percent actually adopted it. And then you know, Facebook came out with their own version of it called LDU, and then gave you some custom uh, information to inject in there instead of using the signal. So um, I think we're going to see that same problem in the U.S. as well. So. Um, a lot of the tools I'm seeing come on the market right now are um, similar to cookie banners, where uh, you go to a section that you can opt in or opt out, they respect GPC, um, but they don't have banners. And once you've got that signal set, you have to manually integrate that with your tag manager or uh, with your website to respect the actual user's consent. Um, and if anyone's done this for GDPR, uh, you've probably gone through your tag manager and put a con new conditional in every single tag that you have uh, to respect the user's cookie consent or not. Uh, it's the same thing with the U.S., um, but just a different set of consents. You're not doing it at the marketing pixel and cookie level. Uh, it's more holistic, right? Do not share my information means just turn off all tags that share this information. So, um, sure. Um, no, uh, I don't know much about it. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't seen that come through yet. Um, I'm assuming it's it's a play for them to push CMP um, and to try to CYA, but um, yeah, I haven't I haven't seen any of the like big cookie platforms market that either. Um, so uh, I'll take a look at it after the presentation then. Uh, yeah, I don't know if the, I don't know when the recordings will be posted, but I can also uh, share the slides afterwards. I'll put them on SlideShare and. Uh, if you find me, I'll give you one. In the back? Yep. I'm not familiar with, with that specifically, um, like the actual API itself. Um, most of what we've been doing is on the web pixel tracking side. Um, but I know uh, for sure there's been a lot of new legislation out about healthcare information in particular and targeting around that. Um, so I, I think you have a right to be concerned. Um, I don't know if anyone else has, has any thought on it or experience with it. Um, I can help connect you with someone that will have the answer if you're interested. For sure. Yeah. I mean, unless, unless they can give you the documentation on the specs that tell you how you can not track someone through that um, or turn off tracking, I would be hesitant.
Yeah. Yeah, so we've, through, uh, through partners, I have, um, and there's a lot of, uh, with both Wirewheel, OneTrust, and Adomi, uh, I've seen a lot of webinars with law firms um, talking about how you take these privacy laws and how you um, uh, can help guide your counsel um, on how to move these forward. A lot of the recommendations I'm seeing for people that operate across the US is um, try to remove the complexity of it, right? Because things are moving so fast. Uh, go with the safest bet across the board for the whole US. Um, that way you're not getting into one-off legal battles. You know, uh, my IP didn't say California, but I'm sitting in California, uh, that type of thing. So um, yeah, I think Wirewheel runs a privacy conference called Spokes, um, and there's a lot of uh, good sessions there with industry uh, speakers and law firms. Um, and they've got a big library on their website I'd, I'd also recommend checking out. Um, so, um, but they, they usually don't get web either, right? They're looking at the laws, they're telling you what you have to do, but they don't understand how that impacts from the website side. So education is, is also important, I think. So. I think so, yeah, and I think pay special attention to California. It's the most mature, and a lot of the other states are basing their laws off of California, primarily CPRA now. Um, so uh, that, that's definitely where I'd start, and it's not new. I mean, California passed the laws, what, 2019? Um, so uh, people have been working on that for a long time, getting ready for it. There's technology vendors getting tech out there to support that, um, but, uh, you know, anyone who tries to target just California because they don't want to mess up their marketing in Oklahoma, uh, you know, it's, it's a challenge. Um, and, you know, that's, that's where the GPP signal and this complexity really, really comes in if you're going to try to target that specifically. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think either of these will probably solve your direct problem in the US. Um, I think this is more for GDPR. Um, and for the US, I, I haven't seen anything in, uh, in Drupal that does exactly that. Um, however, um, maybe, maybe I should contribute something back here. Um, the key for websites is do not sell, do not share. That's, that's really the main thing that's in enforcement right now, and it's one option. Um, so uh, what I'm seeing uh, and what Sephora has done and what some of these vendors are doing is, uh, again, uh, your privacy choices in your footer. It takes you to a form that has an opt out for do not sell, do not share. And when you set that, you either set a cookie on your browser or it's setting something in local storage that says you've opted out. And then you build in uh, you expose that to your data layer or take it to your website, and you can put conditionals off of that. And at the end of the day, that's what cookies is doing here, is when you accept or decline the cookie notice, all it's doing is setting uh, that cookie on your browser um, and then exposing it so that you can read it. And then if you look at their documentation, it's having you go and conditionally set anywhere you're setting scripts or pixels uh, to be based on that API that they created. So you could use the cookies module and the setup around it to do that, but I'm not sure you could get around the banner part. So you might have to implement that custom or pull in a third party tool for the short term until someone contributes it back. I don't know if that. 
overcomplicated or not, but yeah. So, yeah, other vendors like uh, user centrics is one I worked with a lot. Um, they've got the cookie banner. They started in Europe, uh, the cookie banner, and they've got configurations for that. But then they've also got this tool called the smart data protector. And basically what it does is it's another JavaScript snippet library that's injected into the head of your site. And when Dom loads, it'll rewrite all of your script tags to, te to text slash plain so text just slash JavaScript, um, which will essentially render all of your script tags not to get executed. And then it connects to their downstream platform, says, have you given consent? Uh, and is this on the approved list of vendors that you're accepting? Um, and then it'll go rewrite them all back to JavaScript and then load your page. Um, obviously, there's some performance impacts on this um, when you're using a tool to automate that instead of doing it natively because um, it needs to block rendering, it needs to adjust it, and then it needs to comply with it, so you're gonna get um, a bit of a lag there. So it's something you have to deal with in the industry and as this kind of matures, because your downstream systems aren't, there's no way to automate it yet, and they're not accepting the signals, really. So um, hopefully that helps a little bit. It's, it's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of UX issues with the industry right now, which is why I hope that the GPC signal and the user dictated tools will take, take off more, right? Like right now, I think Mozilla has the GPC signal hidden in its settings somewhere. Um, and then Brave and DuckDuckGo have it as standard options. And if you get the DuckDuckGo uh, browser um, plugin, uh, that'll also uh, help you there as well. You can turn it off. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the, that's the thing, though. Like, when they submit the form, if they're not authenticated or logged in, it's still session-based. If they come in another browser, it's, it's different. And um, one of the things I'm seeing trends with, as I'm listening to, like, legal talks and, like, lawyers talk about this is a lot of these... Uh, cookie vendors and tools are trying to use the same heuristics that uh, marketing vendors use to track you, uh, to track you across browsers and devices, to know you're the same person, to apply the same thing. And at that point, it's like, okay, you're doing the same thing, but for good. Um, but they're not, there's not enough money behind it to stay up to speed. And that's, that's what I'm seeing across the, the privacy vendors right now is like, Marketing has all the money from all the marketers. Privacy is something they have to do and they're gonna avoid it at all costs. So putting the same investment into the AI and the ML and the, the heuristic tracking and the work that goes into that, just they don't have the same resources to do it. So I think it'll, I think it'll eventually get there, but I, I think it's gonna lag behind for a bit before that becomes easier for like us to use, so. I mean, uh, it's, it's why I've tried to submit this, this session to most of the conferences I've gone to. I mean, I'm still not, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I'm, I, I'm not, this, I don't dedicate to this space, but I think it's important for everyone to start getting up to speed about and it's gonna bite us at some point and the more we can stay ahead of it, the better, so. Um, 
Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just having the Facebook pixel on your website uh, is enough to get you in trouble because um, you're giving Facebook that data and you're sharing it with them, and they're not a, they're not a service provider, right? They are a tracking analytics company, and uh, yeah, social network is enough to tell you why. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if it's first party data then you're not sharing it, unless you take that data and then share it or sell it behind the scenes. So first party data, I think, will continue to see a rise in CDP platforms and things like that that you own. That data, uh, we'll see more and more of that, but the bar for a normal marketing team, small business, to talk about CDP is way too high right now. So we'll just have to see how that market evolves, but I think there's gonna be a lot of market opportunity in that for challengers that come up and you know don't charge six figures for these types of tools uh, as they become easier to deal with yeah yeah uh, GA is also being targeted by California um, and they are using all of your data for other things um, so yeah basically any third party platform that you're using for tracking and analytics, uh, that you don't own that data is going to be targeted by these laws, which is almost every marketing vendor. Yes, yeah, so third parties' cookies will go away, um, but a lot of the tracking data that you're getting from these third parties is already available to you on your websites and your host providers. So. If I were to like, go out on a limb and start thinking about what the future could hold, um, I think you might see more and more hosting providers get into the data game um, and make that data available because people, like you have logs of visits on your web servers. That's the same thing GA is tracking, but better, right? That's first party data that you could use and analyze and do the same type of thing you're doing with GA through your server. Um, you know, caching and stuff gets in the way of that maybe, um, but they usually sell that full stack, right? So um, I would expect to see more and more of this data become commoditized and available from hosting providers more than just these third-party analytics uh, companies. I think it depends on how they leverage that data and how they make it available. Um, if you're paying for that cloud hosting and you own the data that's there, I, I think there's probably ways to do it right. Um, and if they're not using it to sell, manipulate, market, uh, but I'm just speculating here. So uh, I think there's a lot more maturity that needs to happen in the space to, before that gets addressed. <laughs>